Hi everybody, I'm Teko Sauchu, and today we're going to learn about Alien Commander strategies, tactics, and tips and tricks in Natural Selection 2. I'm going to assume you know everything about the Alien Commander already in terms of like what all the buttons do and how to use the UI and how the tech tree works. If you don't, go ahead and watch my Alien Commander tutorial video, but um, this video is sort of to teach you how to be a good Alien Commander, not just to teach you how to be an Alien Commander, and so uh, two things two restrictions apply first this is in the current build i think like 228 or something so obviously as this game is patched and as strategies evolve over time and the metagame changes uh less and less of this will be applicable so depending on when you're watching this make sure this these aren't like old outdated tactics and second since i'm talking about strategies and tactics i might not be 100 percent right these are just my opinions i'm not the greatest player in the entire world um i think i'm not bad, but obviously you can disagree with me. You can think I'm right in some places and wrong in some places, so at least take these as the opinion of someone who um, plays some commander. And we're going to be talking about public natural selection too, you know, just joining a server and playing. This is not for clan matches, 6v6 or anything like that. I'm not any sort of pro. So uh, we're going to go over strategies, tactics, and tips and tricks. Uh, tips and tricks are pretty much just going to be how to fight newbies, but strategy. So what's the difference between strategy and tactics? Well, strategy is sort of the big picture, and then tactics is what are you doing during each battle or stuff like that. So strategy for the alien commander. I like to sort of uh, think of dividing the game into three sort of sections. You have the early game, the mid game, and the late game, because that sort of breaks down pretty well what sort of different things you're going to be trying to do strategically. And also, the way I think about the aliens as a team, and as the alien commander specifically, is that you want to spread out and control the map. It's your map to take. You want this to be your territory that the marines are fighting through. You want infestation everywhere. You want crags and shifts and fa shades everywhere. It, you want it to be your place that the marines have to venture into. So that's sort of the goal you're going for. For, and we're going to see how this plays out in the early, mid, and late game. So in the early game, uh, the way this works is that you want to quick sort of cyst out to um, the closest two or three extractors uh, to your base. So you're going to want definitely cyst out to the closest two extractors. Um, if there's three equidistant, cyst out to the closest three. And then beyond that, you're going to want to ex expand to the extractors furthest from the marine base. So you're going to have to let your skulk scout around a bit first to find out where the marines started if it's on a map without fixed starting positions. So cyst out to um, as many extractors as you can safely take. Uh, sometimes it can be a little tough to hold to the extractor. Uh, between you and the marine base if it's close spawns, if you spawn next to each other, but uh, you you can probably manage it. It's probably worth um, a try at least. So assist out at least to the safe extractors. You're looking for three, maybe even four uh, fast extractors, almost as fast as you can get them. That's where your early resources should go. You really want to establish a resource flow. Um, and pretty quick off the bat, you're going to want to decide where your second hive is going, because you're going to need a second hive before long. You don't want to make that decision, obviously, before you figure out where the marines have started. But um, I usually choose the hive furthest from the marines, uh, just to give myself more breathing room. Your other option is to choose your second hive closest to the marines, because, of course, you'll be spawning at the hive. And a lot of skulk pressure on marine star is not a bad idea, especially if the marines are not so fantastic. But um, since really what you want to be doing is getting to the late game and controlling the entire map, um, I would probably pick your second hive further away from the marines. And um, if you don't want to do that, your other option is sort of to go for a quick rush, um, a quick skulk rush to marine base once you find out where they are, if you can take out either the power or the comm chair, especially the infantry portals um, right off the bat. This sometimes works. The better the players are, uh, the less likely it is to work, but it's still a viable strategy. It doesn't just work against newbies, it works against real people too, if your team is good enough. Obviously a lot of this depends on how good your players are, so there's not much for you to do as a commander uh, if you order the skulk rush, but if you keep an eye on how your skulks are doing and you see them in marine spawn, like actually biting the infantry portal of their own volition, then you know that maybe the marines, um, you, maybe you smell blood and you can send your skulks in for the kill. So that's a way to end an early game, but otherwise I would suggest getting a hive furthest from the marines that you can, and then trying to get to late game, because uh, that's where you're really going to shine. But uh, soon you're going to be into mid game, once you've spread out, grabbed some extractors, and decided on a second hive. Um, mid game is when you're going to want to be pushing for three hives and map control. Once you've got your second hive up, you'll it'll probably be pretty obvious where your third hive's going to go, some maps less obvious than others, but um, you're going to want three hives eventually, and you're especially want to get, get, want, going to want to control the map as much as possible. So you're going to want to be directing your aliens into the hotspots on the map that you're having trouble controlling. Basically, anytime the marines are killing your cysts in an area, or anytime the marines are setting up outside your hive to try and take it, uh, you're going to want to direct your team there and sort of move 
and push the Marines off the map. You want to be penning the Marines in as much as you possibly can as you build up to the third hive. So the easiest way to do that is to hit the power in their bases. This will draw them back to their bases or hit important buildings in their bases, um, especially the Marines start because often that will force the commander to beacon back. And um, you're going to want to keep your let your skulks keep harassing the um, marine resource extractors because that's going to also keep them busy from pushing out onto the map so um, try and get your skulks into that and that'll get you into the late game phase and the late game phase is really where aliens shine because uh, this is when you can start busting out the onoses and the lurks and the fades and uh, the gorges with the bio bomb and you just go in and you nail the power because that's the weak point at the marines when you've gotten to the late game you just go in and do a lightning strike on the power in their base or if you're not attacking the marine main base or you're attacking some sort of expansion that they have sometimes you don't want to hit the power sometimes it's best to just go for the phase gate knock that out super fast then they won't be able to reinforce and then you can kill the power and then take it down so you're going to want to in the late game you're going to have the power to go into these marine bases and just smash the power node or smash the phase gate and then uh, from there it's just a matter of taking down the marine bases and pushing on through so how do we make this all work how do we go from early to mid game to late game um build up your onuses and lurks and phases and stuff and push them in so um, your first substantial decision, aside from locating the second hive, stuff like that, that we've already sort of talked about, is what uh, what to upgrade your first hive to, a shift, a crag, or a shade. Um, so I can tell you right off the bat, don't get a shade. And I've seen shade be kind of popular in public play. A lot of people are like, Commander, go get cloaking first or something. No, don't get a shade. Shade gets you cloaking and silence. And even though silence is maybe my favorite upgrade on the alien team, it's just so awesome, uh, you don't really need it, especially early game, because skulks can just walk. They hold down the shift key and they won't make any noise. So you don't need to evolve silence uh, as a skulk, and um, at least not for a while. And frankly, cloaking is not so fantastic either against good players. You have to sit perfectly still and wait for them to walk past you. And frankly, you should just be ambushing all the time anyways, and it's not going to help you much to be invisible because once you start moving, you're going to be visible and they do whatever. So cloaking is not so fantastic, um, really, especially compared to the other two choices, which are shift and crag. Um, I prefer Shift Hive at first, this will get you Celerity and Adrenaline. Obviously don't get Adrenaline, that's no good for Skulks, and um, you're not going to Gorge Rush them because that's dumb. So I would go for a Shift Hive first, first because Celerity is pretty sweet for your Skulks, it makes them uh, just tougher to hit, and they're much better in fights. And also you get to build Shifts, and Shifts are great because they'll spawn eggs for you, which means um, you can place a Shift in a hot spot on the map, like um, where you want your second hive to go, or near marine start, and then just spawn eggs out of it all the time. And this is perfect for getting your aliens where you want them to go, um, as opposed to everyone having to run from your main hive to wherever you go. And the other important thing about getting celerity first is that it just gives you so much more map control, because your skulks can get out there faster. Um, they can make it to resource extractors and bite them down faster just because they have celerity to get there. And especially if your players are not good at wall jumping or something, it just gives them that extra boost they're getting around the map faster. So there's a uh, pretty great to go shift first. Crag is also um, not a bad first choice. Um, Carapace and regen, not too bad. Carapace is a People say it's not so great on Skulks because it doesn't give them too much more health, but you know, every couple of bullets um, absorb a couple more bullets in a marine fight. That can be the difference between life and death, so Crag's not bad. And uh, the advantage of a Crag Hive is that it'll let you build the Crags, and you can drop one of those um, on your second Hive before it's built, and then it'll heal up that second Hive to full strength, so if the marines discover it, uh, they'll have trouble taking it down. But I suggest Shift first, and then... Um, Crag second, or Crag first and Shift second. You do want shifts um, fairly soon because it's nice to place those around to spawn the eggs, especially if you have the third, um, or if especially if you have the extra resources to spawn eggs. And then a shade is a fine third hive. Obviously, you don't have any choice um, around there. So um, I would probably upgrade your hive to um, a shift before grabbing your second hive. Uh, some people go fast second hive. If you can trust your team to hold your fast second hive, then it's a pretty big advantage to get a second hive up there pretty fast, because this will spawn a bunch more eggs for you. It'll give you two vectors of attack um, on the map, and it'll obviously cr increase your map control even more than spreading shifts out. But um, I would probably go for shift and then celerity, and then um, once you've sisted out, you've, you've also already sisted out and grabbed extractors, so it shouldn't be too long before you can take a second hive. So once you get your second hive, you're pretty pretty solidly into the mid game. And this is when you need to start evolving your life form upgrades. Leap is pretty much a no brainer. It's almost always better to get leap um, before any other life form upgrade. Sometimes you want bio bomb for your gorge because the Marines will have established some sort of base somewhere and you need your gorges to bomb it out. 
Um, but other than that, Leap just has so much to the viability of Skulks that you want to get them as soon as possible. Um, once the Marines start rolling out like shotguns and stuff, and maybe weapons 1 or weapons 2, and they start chewing up your Skulks, you're going to need to give them Leap so they can get back into the game and keep being useful. So um, Leap is probably the first one to get. Biobomb is a good second one. You should have at least one or two Gorges pretty much all the time. Um, it's very, very helpful to have Gorges healing up your team and dropping clog walls and Hydras. So um, hopefully you'll have gorges, and then once you get bio bombs, you can transition uh, to using the gorges at, on more of an offensive role because um, that can really wear down the marines. So that'll keep them really on their back feet for the mid game. And worst comes to worst, you can always just send your gorges around uh, with their bio bombs to try and take out marine extractors. And once you get bio bomb, is when you should really get adrenaline, no matter if you've gone shift first or second, because um, once you get adrenaline, your gorges need or once you get bio bomb, your gorges need an infinite supply of adrenaline. Then after that, um, you can your next big choice is whether you want to get more life form upgrades, like um, specifically spores or blink, or whether you want to go for a third hive. This is pretty situational. Um, if you're doing pretty well, you're going to want to drop your third hive probably and get a foothold even more on the map. Otherwise, uh, you might need either blink on your fades or uh, spores on your lurks or both to push out and grab the third hive. It all depends how the game is going. Uh, whether you get blink or spores or both depends on the players that you have. Um, if you've got good fades, then yeah, give them blink. Um, they're going to want adrenaline too. If you have good lurks, then yeah, give them spores. If you've got good lurks and fades, then give them both. So just ask your players. Um, if you if you trust them to be good no matter what, I think an effective fade is probably more effective than um, an effective lurk, but obviously the lurk requires fewer team uh, personal resources to evolve into, so you might just grab spores uh, and then get your third hive up before uh, worrying about trying to tech up to fades and get your team evolved into fades and stuff. So hopefully around now we've gotten to our third hive. Um, once you do get your third hive, you'll want to grab spores and blink um, and obviously upgrade it into a shade or something. Um, now you can start doing all sorts of stuff to the enemy. You're going to want to um, just start banking resources, spreading out on as much of the map as possible, and uh, grabbing all the extractors that you conceivably can, because then you can start dropping Onos eggs, your players can start going Onos, and um, once you have the mix of the Onos, the Gorge, the Fade, and the Lurk, it's going to be pretty tough for the Marines to hold on to all their bases at once. So you're going to want to target specific bases, take them down, take over that base, and just spread out over the entire map, and it will be yours. And that's basically how I see alien strategy going. Unless you go for the quick hit on the jugular in the beginning, um, it's going to be a sort of slow, encompassing, spread out the map, uh, tech up in vaguely the order I mentioned, and uh, you're good to go. So um, now I think we're going to move on to tactics. So those are strategy. That's sort of the big picture. And what can we do sort of day to day or um, in the middle of the fight as an alien commander, what you should, should you be doing all the time instead of thinking about strategy all the time? Well, um, here's some good tactics to have in your repertoire. First, uh, crags are pretty sweet to build in um, hive rooms that don't have a hive yet. You drop a crag or two, and then you drop the hive. The importance of this is that the crag will heal the hive, um, and so the hive will be at full health before it finishes building, and this will give it much more resilience if the marines discover it. Also, you can have a gorge heal the hive. Uh, they should hopefully be doing this on their own, but maybe they're busy or something. You can always let them know. Whenever you drop a hive, you can tell a gorge, quick, heal this up, and they can use their heal spray to bring it up to full health. So that's nice. Nice. Um, a shift, if it's uh, fully mature, you can upgrade it so it can teleport stuff around. It's good to, um, if you have a shift that you built, and it, maybe near the beginning of the game to position some eggs somewhere and it's no longer useful there, uh, go ahead and spend the 15 res to upgrade it when it's at 100% maturity and then just teleport it somewhere and um, use this as a forward base to attack. It's nice if you teleport the shift or if you build a new shift also where the unbuilt hive is in addition to the crags or maybe instead of the crags because then obviously your aliens can spawn in and defend that hive while it's still building. Um, you want to try and hide your hives from the marines while they're being built. You can't really do this. Um, if you have a shade, it'll hide it unless the marine commander scans, but the marines can just shoot where the hive is. So um, probably the best way to hide your hives when you're building them is just to build them when the marines aren't looking, and you just hope you get lucky. And you can also direct your team to attack marines that are heading towards the hive, intercept them before they make it so that the marines never know for sure whether you have a hive going up. So um, 
that is nice. In terms of shade placement, um, nothing really useful you can do with shades. I'd drop one maybe at each hive, just once you've got the resources and you're on your third hive anyways. Um, and it can be kind of fun up front, but mostly what you're going to be building on the front lines as a commander, alien commander, um, probably crags. Shifts are nice for the eggs, but unless you're constantly spawning eggs from it, uh, you don't need a shift everywhere. But you can build little crag nests on the infestation near the enemy, and then your aliens can go back to those to heal. This is especially important if your gorges are busy, or you don't have any gorges or something, because uh, these crag nests, like one or two crags, um, will give your aliens a forward base to heal back up at so they don't have to keep going back for the hive. That's pretty good. Uh, the drifter is a very useful tool. You should probably build a drifter early in the game uh, to hang out at your second hive if you're going to go for sort of a kind of far second hive from where you spawn so that you don't have to have players always scouting it. And generally you want to scout as much of the map with drifters as possible. Remember they're invisible when they're not moving so just stick them in a corner and uh, hope the marines don't scan. Um, this should give you um, enough information about the map to make some basic strategic and tactical uh, choices without having to rely 100% on your players. Uh, skulks, especially in the early game and the mid game, you're want going to want to be directing your skulks through safe routes and telling them which extractors to target or which um, areas to scout for extractors. You should have a fairly good um, knowledge of how um, what's going on on the map. You should be paying attention where you see marines, where the marine base is, stuff like that. Uh, you can see marines as sort of marine dark clouds moving on the infestation. If um, nobody has sight on them, you'll still be able to see the marines coming. So you can direct your skulks through safe routes so they can get behind the marines, to the side of the marines, uh, find extractors and stuff like that. So um, as a commander, a lot of your time should be spent telling people where they need to go and how they need to get there. And the only way to know that is to know where to attack, which is wherever the marines aren't, and how to get there, which just comes from playing a lot and from paying attention to the map. So that's how to be um, a good commander. You want to tell your gorges where you want them to build their clog walls. Sometimes they'll do it on their own, but um, it's good if you direct your gorges and use them to maximum efficiency. Uh, it's good to clog off a wall, or sorry, clog off a hallway leading to where you want your, to build your second hive. Um, some people, well, I don't know, maybe I'm talking out my ass. I think some people like to clog up the hallway between Marine Start and uh, the closest alien hive, especially if they spawned cross positions. I'm not sure it's worth uh, blocking the Marines from coming into your hive unless you're feeling some real pressure. Um, usually the Skulks can be back Marines that are trying to take on the hive. Shouldn't be too tough. You're kind of at a stalemate usually when you spawn at close positions, but that's another place you can tell your Gorge to build a clog wall uh, with some Hydras if you want. And um, another option is to build a clog wall at just some strategically important point and then maybe drop a couple crags there or something and turn it into sort of a forward base for you can even drop a shift but um i think probably your best bet is having the gorge clog up the uh easiest or closest or fastest entrance to your second hive that you're going to want to um, keep the marines out of and then later your third hive um, so be directing your gorges that's important um the shift egg spawn and the shift that can the shift teleporting around and then spawning eggs both very important you're going to want to spawn the eggs where you need your players to spawn so this can either be in your hive if you just need more eggs your people are just getting killed uh, that's not so fantastic probably what's better is um, you'll want to spawn them on a flank or near a marine uh, base or something just to keep constant pressure going there but remember it costs five resources each time you spawn some eggs so you can't keep it going um, forever. It's good for a surprise um, attack sometimes. Um, when you're getting into the mid and the late game, you'll often find yourself with extra resources or you won't be able to spend them as fast as they're coming in because it takes time to research all these things. Uh, that's when you can start building some whips. Um, the the whips are nice because you can direct them on your own and you can do damage with them on your own so you don't have to rely on players or tell people to go anywhere. Um, they're not like the greatest or anything. They're okay stack defenses. They'll especially stop sort of marines from doing run bys if you place them right so they have a long line of sight, but that they're not easily shot by the um in the direction the marines are coming from. The real beauty of whips is really that they can bat back uh, the enemy grenades. Once the r marines research grenade launchers, uh, you're going to see some pain coming in, unless you get some whips up, and those will just whip the grenades right back at the marines. So uh, once you see some grenade launchers, hopefully you have some whips ready to go, or you can grow them uh, pretty fast, and then you can even use the nutrient mist on them to uh, uh, get them up to 100% maturity, and then you can upgrade them with the little um, thing that lets them shoot the ball of acid pretty far, and that's a pretty good upgrade on the whips. I would recommend uh, getting that. Um, 
it, I would recommend every once in a while jumping out of the comm chair and fighting yourself, or jumping out of the hive and fighting yourself if things are getting hairy. This is a kind of a tough one in public games because sometimes people freak out and they're like, oh my god, our commander's gone and blah blah blah. But if you tell everybody, like, look, I'm going to jump out of the chair, or I'm going to jump out of the hive for a moment and kill some marines, go back inside, don't freak out, uh, people should be pretty understanding and it's no uh, big deal. And they'll even vote kick somebody who gets in the hive um, when you jumped out, if you ask nicely. Um, some jerk who just hops in. And this is especially nice when exos are attacking your base and your marines manage to kill off, or your aliens manage to kill off the supporting marines, but the exos are still there. Because then every other, every single skulk helps. Um, every little bit biting down those exos, they have trouble targeting skulks on their own. Uh, some people go gorge before they get into the uh, command, uh, into the hive. Um, yeah, you can. The advantage to doing that is you can drop some hydras, even drop some clogs, and then you can also get out and heal the hive when it's under attack. Uh, not a bad idea, but down to personal preference, I think. Um, when you start getting into the late game and you have exos coming up on you, arcs coming up on you, or jetpacks coming up on you, um, it's going to be the gorge you're relying on, especially for the first two, because versus exos and versus arcs, gorges just do huge amounts of damage. Uh, the bile bomb destroys the exos and destroys the arcs. Um, just wipes the floor with them, so get your gorges there and keep them very well protected. Uh, even give them some crags and stuff, because you'll be on the defense. Um, if you can catch the arcs in a train going towards you, then your skulks can ambush them. Your lurks are actually very good at ambushing them. Your fades, too. Um, pretty much anyone ambushing a arc in a train is good. Um, but if the marines are good, they'll just be protecting the arc train, so that might get ugly. Um, if the arcs do get close enough to target down your one of your hives or something, you're pretty much screwed. you got to get your gorges and your uh, crags healing it as much as you possibly can, and then just tell your entire team, you know, focus on those arcs, get in there, kill the arcs. Um, you want some bio bombs, but your gorges are also going to be healing, so it just gets pretty tough. Um, just try and wipe out the arcs before there's a critical mass of them. The important thing is to make sure there's not enough arcs to kill the hive in like a few hits, because if there's like three arcs or something, then you can probably outheal that with your crags, because they're not going to do the damage. But like five or six arcs firing at once, that'll drop the hive real fast. So um, you don't have to kill every single arc, just kill enough so that it's not a huge threat. Um, Exos, similar sort of thing, except um, you, uh, it's it's harder to fight them head-on, but it's also safer because uh, they have to get inside your hive to fight. So uh, your gorges with bio bombs are going to be really good versus those two. And then versus the jetpacks, it really just comes down to how good your players are. It's going to be lurks and fades taking on the jetpackers, and um, even hydras and uh, whips can help, so drop some whips, um, and those can sort of swat jetpackers out of the sky. But really it's going to be down to your players to try and fight off any uh, marauding jetpackers. Having clogs in the hallway will be nice to delay them, and just generally having a lot of crags on your hive is good, because then jetpackers won't be able to come in and uh, wipe out your hive on their own. The nutrient mist is helpful if anyone's evolving into a higher life form. Just mist them. There's pretty much no reason not to, especially once the onuses are coming out. Um, drop onus eggs and stuff once you're into the really late game. Uh, give Just give your players whatever life forms they need. No reason not to do that. And then bone wall. Uh, there's a lot of w the situations where you can use bone wall. Um, you have to use it on infestation, so get used to that. It's good for cutting marines off from each other. If you have like three marines going in a group and you can drop a bone wall and isolate one of them and then your skulks can run in. Especially if like in the middle of a fight you can drop a bone wall and block two marines off from the third who's getting eaten by skulks or something. So that's a great way to use it. Divide and conquer. Um, another way to do it is to protect the retreat of an Onos, or of anybody, of a Gorge or an Onos, are the ones you're going to really want to, well, and Fades and Lurks, sure, protect the retreat of anybody. If Marines are chasing them, you can drop a Bone Wall and protect them from that. And then, um, finally, you can just use it as a blocker to let aliens get in close. If your aliens have to close down a um, hallway, then obviously you know that's a sort of a death sentence, but if you drop a Bone Wall at the end of the hallway in front of the Marines, they'll be stuck behind it, they'll have to shoot it down, or just wait for it to go away, and meanwhile your aliens can close in and kill it. Um, dual XO miniguns will kill a bone wall almost instantly, so don't bother trying to do that, but um, you can block, oh, and you can block retreats, obviously, if is, this is important for XOs mostly when they get low, um, especially if you kill whoever's welding them, they're going to start pulling out if they're smart, so drop a bone wall behind a retreating XO, and that can be what it takes to take them out. Um, use your drifters for scouting, we already talked about that. Um, that's so. Th those are pretty much the the tactics I think that um, are going to occupy your time as an alien commander, and that's 
pretty much how I conceive of the game, strategies, tactics. Now I said I'd do tips and tricks, and I said that tips and tricks would mostly be for fighting newbies. Now these are tactics I've talked about. They're not for competitive matches, but they're for people who know what they're doing. There are some things in Natural Selection 2 that you can do on players who aren't very smart, um, and unfortunately there will always be not very smart players. So here's some fun stuff you can do if you're a commander and you're like, oh, we're going to win, whatever, or whatever. Um, whip spam. This is pretty fun. You just build a bunch of whips, and since you can uproot them and move them around, uh, this can be a way to put pressure on the marines in all sorts of directions, and they just can't deal with it, especially if the marine commander isn't great. You can just walk some, walk some whips into one of their bases, root them down, and then they'll be like, oh man, we can't take this out. So that's good. Um, cysts. If you, you can just drop a cyst wherever you want, obviously, as long as it's connected to another cyst. Some marines just go for these things like pinatas. They're like, oh my god, assist, I gotta kill it. And so if you drop a system for them, they'll be like, oh, I must stop everything and kill this cyst. And so they can be like chasing somebody, and you can be like, oop, bloop, 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 here's a couple cysts. And they'll be like, well, better stop chasing that person and kill these cysts. And so for like three resources, you can distract a marine for a few seconds, let your people get away. So uh, that's not going to work on good players, but um, some new people will be like, ooh, assist, and then they'll shoot it. Um, going camo first. That can be effective against new players because they're like, oh man, the aliens are invisible. I can't see them. And so then your players can just walk around the map and turn invisible and kill everybody. But against bad players, not going to work. Um, or against good players, not going to work. And then finally, the base rush. Um, the base rush will work against good players too if it's like the right time or you get lucky or your players are pretty good compared to the others or something like that. But against bad players, um, a base rush is pretty, I mean, it's not foolproof, but it can work pretty well. You just keep sending skulks at them, and like eventually you just keep biting the stuff down. They won't be able to research welders fast enough. You just get a couple bites in on the power each time, soon their base is down, and the game is over. So um, this has been kind of a long video, and I hope it has been helpful. Um, now you know not just how to play the Alien Commander technically, but you also know strategies, tips, and tricks, and stuff like that. Um, if you have any things you would do differently, or any other comments, you can always leave them in the video, and I hope I'll see you someday in Natural Selection 2. Maybe you can be my commander, and I'll be like, no, that's not what I said in the video, and you'll be like, no, it's okay, I got a better idea, it's not in the video, and I'll be like, you go fuck yourself, and then you'll be like, that's not very nice, and I'll be like, yeah, it's not very nice. Okay, bye.